DIY kitchen backsplash ideas with plastic, rubber mats, and more that are renter friendly. <music> Hey guys, YouTube Essentials here. For today's video, I'm going to be making DIY kitchen backsplashes that are renter friendly. I'm going to be starting by cutting the size that I need from this plastic sheet that I got from Home Depot. This can also be gotten at Lowe's. I'm going to be making provisions for the outlets before I continue. I'll be using two different contact papers on this plastic sheet that I just cut and I'm going to be making a pattern with it. If you're new to my channel, it's so great to have you here. Now don't forget to click on the subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. Now I'm going to have the second contact paper attached at the top. Because this is a render friendly idea, I'm going to be attaching this to the wall with little tack nails. Because of the nature of the plastic sheet, this bottom part is rough, so I'm going to be covering that bottom part with PVC strips. And I didn't have enough, so I had to improvise and use boards, but I would strongly advise using just PVC strips for the backsplash. I cut a little piece of foam board that is 11 inches long and I'll be using this to draw out my pattern on the wall. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take a ruler and a sharp X-Acto knife to carve out the marked part. And I'm going to be doing it carefully so that the only thing that's going to come off is the first layer of contact paper. In all honesty, I had another design in mind, a very bold, big design that I wanted making. That's why I had to put a lot of black contact paper at the back before having the other contact paper put on top of it. But because the design didn't work out, I had to do it this way. So for this design, the easiest way to go about it is to have just the brighter contact paper alone on the plastic sheet and then cut strips from the black contact paper and just attach them on top. It's going to save a lot of time. Now, as you can see, I added silver tape and gold tape as well, just to give this pattern a more interesting look. This is how the gold tape that I used looks like. Now it was too wide, so I had to cut it into two. The link for everything that I use for this project is going to be down in the description box below. Now I'm going to be covering this whole thing here with a thick layer of Mod Podge and I'm going to be doing it three times. I'm using gloss Mod Podge because I want it to have this transparent shiny look when it dries.
This is what it now looks like after three thick coats of Mod Podge. Now it has a hard surface and it's also easy to clean. So this can definitely be used as a backsplash. Now for a rental, this can easily be removed because it was attached with little tack nails. For the second backsplash idea, I'm going to be using table mats. Now I have loved this pattern for the longest time and I wanted it on the wall. Now all I'm going to do is cut out the sides that I will be needing and attaching them together on a wall that has already been covered with plastic. When I put two together like this, it's gonna be hard to see where they meet from afar, but when you look really close, you might just see it. But from afar, it's gonna be hard to notice. Now, if you wanna to avoid too many lines, you can easily just buy a table runner. This is where I'm gonna be covering the table mats on, and like I said, it has already been covered with the plastic sheet. I use little tack nails to attach the plastic sheet to the wall. I'll be attaching the table mats to the plastic sheets with hot glue. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to be applying three thick coats of Mod Podge over the mats. I'll let the first coat dry for about an hour before applying the second coat. I'll wait for another hour before applying the third coat. Because I used hot glue to attach the mats, I had to use one tack nails on each mat just to keep it in place while I apply the Mod Podge. I am so impressed with how much the Mod Podge almost kind of flushed with the table mats. You can see from here that the table mats has kind of fused with the plastic sheet and the Mod Podge is almost at the same level with the surface of the table mat. I just love this because it's such a unique backsplash for a kitchen. And like I said earlier, you can also just use a table runner to reduce the cutout lines. Another simple and quick and easy backsplash idea is to use the peel and stick tiles. Now the work has been done for us and this is super cheap, but it's made out of plastic. I went to Lowe's and then I saw another type but it's more realistic looking it kind of almost gives you the feel of an actual stone before i start i'm going to clean the wall before then attaching the peel and stick tiles to it the adhesive used on this peel and stick is really tough so they do not give you room for errors at all I made errors on a couple of some and it was really hard to take off. So I would recommend this for people who actually own the home who would want to make it more permanent because the adhesive just might remove the paint if you're not careful. I'm going to cut out singular pieces to cover up the open spaces.
You can also cut the tiles to the size that you want to give it a more flushed look. They're kind of hard to cut, so some of the cutouts came out looking a little bit shabby, but it's not noticeable. I love the look of this backsplash. And would you guys want to know what three of them look like together? Well, guess what? I did all three patterns in one kitchen, only because out of the three, one will be picked that would work for the entire kitchen. I love the way all three backsplashes turned out. And the fun part is, it's renter friendly and so easy to remove. This is a cool way to have different options for your backsplashes and you're not restricted to just one. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned one or two things from it. Now don't forget to like it and share with your friends and families as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have other home decor DIY videos that are linked in the description box below to check them out. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button.